What's up, YouTube? Cody, Second Amendment Work Wood. Wow. Let's try that again. Good morning, YouTube. Cody, Second Amendment Woodworking. Coming to you with a custom. Uh, wow. Words. Cody, Second Amendment Woodworking. Good morning, or whatever time you're watching this video. I have a request for a shadow box for a, not a retirement gift, but uh, someone with a local fire department's leaving for another job and they want to thank him for his years of service here. So uh, I'm going to do something similar to this uh, shadow box idea. Uh, I don't have a leather shield that's going to go in there from a helmet, uh, possibly have one coming later, but I can't build a shadow box without dimensions of exactly what I'm putting into it. So. With that similar concept in mind, we're gonna use glass. I got a bunch of naughty alder here. Real freaking naughty. We're gonna frame uh, with an MDF backer. Uh, frame it out with the naughty alder. I'm gonna put some shiplap in here. I'll show you guys what that's gonna look like. And then I'm gonna inlay some glass on the top. Couple of different ideas going through my head. Uh, if you looked at that last picture that I put up, I had half of the glass was black and the logo was etched out of the black. I'm thinking that this would look cool with it ghosted into there. So I'm literally just etching the glass and it's not through paint. So you'd be able to see the entirety. I was gonna cut out my own shield for a helmet out of wood on the laser using eighth inch uh, Baltic birch. And then down here, I'm gonna engrave some hose with uh, the either department name or the, his last name. I'm not 100% sure, but that's the plan. This will probably change 15 more times. Uh, it's due tomorrow night. So I have, um, yeah, less than two days to do this, but let's jump into it. All right, so the plan as of now, I have some of my uh, shiplap left over from another project. I'm gonna utilize it. Shiplap has uh, two shelves on each side for lack of better terms, half of the thickness of the wood. Each piece nicely lays into each other and you get good seams. And now I can either brad, tack, or do whatever I'm gonna do uh, into the seams to lock these together. For this, basically, I'm just gonna cut all these down to the thickness of my backer, which is that MDF. And once I have a good solid base, I'll be able to build off of that. I'm going to take this glass that I got from uh, Lowe's, just an eighth inch. I'm going to cut it down to the correct size, take this knotty alder and build my frame, run a rabbit so I can slide the um, glass right into it. And yeah, we'll see what we have after that, but let's get into that. Got the backer square. I love this look. Uh, if you have a piece that's gonna split one of these um, shiplap runs, do it evenly on the top and the bottom. Makes it look a lot more uniform. But I'm not sure if I wanna do a divider down the center, uh, just a clean black line, I'll paint half of it and etch it, or I completely get rid of the line. The Maltese cross goes here. I'm not gonna try to draw it again because I'm terrible at drawing them. And then our uh, shield would go kind of in this area with some hose. Not 100% sure what I want to do. I think I'm going to let this one go by chance. I'm going to take this back over to the laser, take the glass, and try to mask it and engrave directly on the glass so the entire thing's clear. The other one I'm going to try is I'm going to paint half and etch it and see what it looks like. If I can get away with just ghosting it in, I think that's what I'm going to do because I really like that look. It lets the uh, wood stand out and there's no chances any of the paint getting scratched or dinged. But this is the uh, general layout. I still don't have the shield, so I might have to make one and I think that's what I'm gonna start working on just as a contingency plan in case I don't have it. But uh, for the most part, even if I get it like tomorrow night or something, I'll be able to lay this on here and glue it and it should be all right. All right, what's up guys? Just made it back to the shop. Uh, I got some custom pieces of glass being cut. I tried to cut it myself and uh, it was too marred on the side of the glass. Had a bunch of little chips. Every time I tried to cut it, it shattered in millions of pieces. So I'm gonna take uh, a couple different prepped pieces of glass and see which um, technique 
has the best engraving when I'm done with it. So I have two pieces here. One has just a transfer tape used for like vinyl application. I heard this one usually has the best look as well as the next piece, which has transfer tape as well as high heat paint. So what I need to do is in the software, take my design, flip it, cause I want to engrave on the back. So on the front side, the shiny side, you end up seeing um, a mirrored image. And then once it's in a shadow box, no one can scratch it or, or scrape off the paint because you're on the opposite side. So we're gonna give those a test right now. It's uh, new to me to doing this on just transfer tape and clear glass. I usually have to use the paint as a medium so the laser heats up. This is a lot higher power than what I'm used to working with. So this will be a first for me. Let's hope it comes out. Right now it's in the bed. It's making a pretty interesting noise, but I think that's the uh, transfer tape just being essentially smelted right off the top of it. I even lost my genitalia in an unfortunate smelting accident. But uh, I'm doing a really small logo first because it's only a five minute run time. It should be pretty quick. Uh, and I can test out the different powers and how uh, the recommended settings with this 150 watt tube, this glass, the transfer tape, how it all works. But for what I can see right now, it looks pretty clean, but we're gonna have to flip it over and see. So the transfer tape version looks very clean. It came out, so when you flip it, it uh, looks pretty good. Now on this one, because there's transfer tape on it, you're able to see the um, contrast between the tape and what was burned. If I was to take that off, I'm afraid it's not gonna look as clean. So if you look at the high temp version of it, it kind of gives it a silver look. The back is still very clean, but I think I like the way that's gonna be. Uh, I don't know. Now that I took the tape off this thing, that looks pretty freaking sweet. Do you guys see? I don't know if it'll focus how clean. Obviously, a couple little blemishes from where the tape and my razor hit it, but that is pretty freaking clean. Looks pretty dang good. Kind of up in the air. All right, change my mind again. Decided I'm going to do the clean glass. I think it looks the best. So jumping over here to the computer. I'm running this at a, it's a 150 watt tube. I'm running it at a 325 on my speed, power 20, and uh, my interval is 0.065. It looks really good on that last one I just did, and uh, I like how clear it is. So I think I can get this thing ready to rock. I taped it off, drew a center line. I have it centered on the piece, and uh, we're gonna see how this one comes out. Should look pretty good. Then I have Brad Nails framing, and I can get the rest of this thing built. All right, so after a bunch of trial and error, of course, this is what I'm going with. So this is kind of what it's gonna look like. Obviously, I gotta get that stuff off the glass. But once it's uh, sitting in its trim, it'll be just off of the piece. I'll make it a little bit darker behind it. But uh, right now, I'm working on making a wooden shield, just like a fire helmet. Um, it'll be a kind of a smaller piece. You can't really see it through the smudges, but should look pretty cool. It's gonna go right next to it here, and then just below it, uh, I'll engrave some hose. So let's see. All right, good morning guys. Day number two. Got a lot done yesterday on the laser. Got the uh, hose engraved with uh, BDU on it. I think it looks really good. Just deep enough. Gives it that old kind of burnt look, but not uh, burned all the way through it. Uh, made a shield. The one that they ordered professionally is uh, in the mail somewhere with no tracking. So made one myself. I'm gonna show you guys how I took it from the laser, put it on some tape, painted it all together, and then removing the letters, but keeping like the top of the A and the R in there. So it looks like this, because obviously all the pieces fall out. So I'm gonna do a time-lapse of that one. And then uh, we're gonna put this piece together. The glass has to go inside of it. We're gonna mount everything, clean the glass, and then I'm gonna use a, uh, that early American stain we've been using on the Naughty Alder uh, wrap on this thing and it should look pretty good. We'll get this thing done tonight. And uh, gotta love rush orders, right?
minus the uh, dirt, which I'll clean off and the poly I'm gonna put on it. I think it looks pretty nice. So like a shield and that will go in here next to the etched glass and it's a really clean look. I have some uh, tacks that I'm gonna put on here. Kind of throw these on there just for, I'll probably uh, drill these out, put two tacks here, two or possibly four tacks on here and then the rest will be really clean. I also need to burn the back of this. Um, I think it'll give a little bit more contrast for the logo that's etched into the glass, but also kind of clean up these edges. Since this is a factory stain that came with this shiplap, you see I don't have something to match it. So I'm gonna probably just put a real quick burn around the edges using propane and we'll see what that looks like. All right, so when it comes to doing the uh, miter corners on this thing, this piece, I have it as square as I possibly can. I ran it through the table saw and instead of taking this back and forth to the saw a couple times and trying and hoping that I measured everything correctly, I do a little cheat way. Because I'm building this piece by piece and it's a little bit more of a custom deal, I'm not just building a you know, a cabinet door or a drawer front or something like that, this needs to be uh, pretty spot on. So the way I do it is I take a razor blade. Out of the stock I'm using for my trim pieces or the box, I take an extra piece, I put my 245 miters on it, and this is now my template. So I slide this down my piece right up to the, we'll pretend there's no miter here, but let's say I had everything done and I'm just dropping a piece in and I need to see where this new piece is gonna line up. Well, to put a miter in there, what I like to do is just see how it feels and see how it lines up with my rabbit on the inside. But what I do is I take a razor blade, everything's snug. I make an inside line. I just score it on the inside and I take an outside score. So now I have two lines. I put a little cheat line or reference line of which way my miter needs to be when I get over to the chop saw, just in case I forgot where I got 12 million other things, which happens all the time that are through my mind. And I end up putting the cut in the wrong spot. I usually cut these a little bit proud because I can always take what away I can't add it, but that's my little hack for a uh, custom kind of building in a piece instead of just banging it all out on one table. So hope that helps. All right, so I got this whole thing framed out, just a rough frame. Uh, the problem here is that because of where both of these are, it's at a slight angle. So what I do is I just slide everything so it's flush and I can see where they intersect, like so. I knock everything over with the gimbal. Oh my goodness. And then I make uh, straight lines based off of this corner being perfect. Now my last cut, I do the same razor technique and this thing should fit. pretty good so I have these back corners taped like I said it just allows the corner to uh, be held together so I can really get a good fit it's a good fit in the back it's just moved a little bit there we go I'm not gonna have to do really any uh, filling of the seams now here in the front it's not taped but I can just hold it with my hand looks very good and then same thing over here so I'm gonna keep this piece off because I need to slide the glass into it and then once it's in there, I'll just hold this one up and then I can make sure everything's gonna fit. It's always a gamble when you uh, wanna put a piece of glass into here because of how it was cut. Now, yesterday when I was cutting the glass, it was going all sorts of wrong and that's because the scoring tool I had to cut wasn't uh, sharp and I'm pretty sure it was dropped a couple times. So I just went to Lowe's, had them cut some pieces exactly what I needed. And then if it doesn't fit, I can always just run this rabbit a little bit deeper on either side. All right, I got the frame together, got the glass in it. Actually works pretty well. All my seams are tight. All I need to do is uh, glue it now. I'm gonna put some pin nails in here with some glue to hold it together. Once again, three sides, get that done. Take the glass out, get it perfectly clean, slide it back in, and then I can finish this bottom rail. Once that's done, I'm gonna sand it. I was thinking about putting the whole thing together with the glass in it and then stain it, but I also don't wanna get stain on the glass and then I have a lot of cleanup work to do.
glare is so bad. Oh, hey, got a lot more done. Put the uh, box together, got all the corners nice and sexy like. Got the glass mounted, put a little bit of silicone in the uh, top, uh, wrap it just so the glass, once it actually dries, it'll have a little bit of cushion when it's moving. I have the uh, pet backer piece prepped right here. I'm gonna do a light burn on it real quick. And then I have these accent pieces, these little tacks uh, ready to go on the shield. And I was gonna do two of these tacks, but I like how once these are uh, laid out on the piece, it adds a little bit more style. Also, real quick side note, uh, a lot of people ask me what I'm using for my uh, propane setup. I have the burns o -matic gun, which comes right on the uh, cylinders if you buy them from Lowe's or Home Depot. You can get a propane barbecue extension, kind of what you use for camping, using the larger ones for uh, your stoves and whatnot. They connect perfectly together, and I have, what, this five, four foot run from my tank to my nozzle, and I'm just using the Blue Rhino exchangeable tanks. So this thing, I don't think I've put a new tank on this. It's been about a year, and I do a lot of burning with it, so for the most part right now, this is what I've been using, and I'll put a link in the description on Amazon for uh, where I got that hose and what that uh, gun part is. Thanks for watching guys, this one was super cool. I'm uh, very excited how this came out. Uh, half of these deals, you just gotta roll with it, step by step, see what works, what doesn't, you roll with the punches. Didn't have the commercial uh, shield, but it is gonna show up eventually. That could be used as another present. Use what you have, create what you can. This is some trash hose, we threw it together with some shiplap. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna subscribe and see what other crazy stuff we come up with, hit the subscribe button and tap that bell icon, it'll notify you when I post another video. Other than that, I'll give you a little tour of this with some closer B-roll, but we'll see you next time.